listeners. Uh, today, I have a cool episode of Science News for you, but it's also really creepy. It's about a study that was published in the journal Nature Neuroscience. Researchers in South Korea, led by Associate Professor of Engineering Phil Seung Lee and biologist Dae Soo Kim, have recently performed an experiment where they took mice and implanted fiber optic threads into their skulls. These threads penetrated into the mouse's brain, reaching into a point that, when stimulated, is known to cause object craving behavior. The object is basically something that the animal notices and is interested in, and their research showed that it's very similar to and somewhat involved in the same neural pathways that are activated when predators hunt their prey. The brain is processing the prey as this extra object floating around in 3D space, and the predator is tracking that object and trying to hunt it down and tackle it. To simulate an object, the researchers used small little items, like a wooden block, plastic balls, magnets, cotton sticks, among various other objects. The researchers found that when they sent an electrical impulse through the fiber optic thread, it activated the object-craving region of the mouse brain and made them strongly attracted to the object. It made them crave the object. First, they held the object on a stick, and they held it inside the mouse enclosure. When they turned on the signal to the brain, the mouse would show vigorous and excited behavior as it searched for and then tried to tackle or grab onto the object, as if it was hunting it and trying to, to pounce on it or wrap its body around it. Almost the moment that the signal was turned off, the mouse lost interest in the subject, and it would scurry somewhere else, or go nestle up against a corner. Next, the researchers set up a maze, and they equipped the mice with headgear that dangles an object in front of them, just out of their reach. When the signal was activated, the brain region got excited, and the mice would chase after the object. The headgear had a rotating segment that could swing the object from side to side of the mouse's head so as to get the mouse to look left or right, and to subsequently move left or right. The electrically stimulated mice obeyed pretty much perfectly, and they were able to be steered through a maze. They were literally steered through an environment by the researchers, simply by providing a directional input. You know, they, they would move the direction of the object hanging in front of the mouse's face, and that, in addition to the requisite brain stimulation, would cause the mouse to change direction to follow the object. The researchers weren't controlling the mouse's muscles. They weren't forcing it to move its body. But they were fiddling with its brain chemistry and artificially inducing signals that made the mice bend to their will. The effect was so strong that the stimulated mice would chase after the object with total disregard for other things around them. They would ignore piles of food, and they would even run past sexually receptive females. That's pretty crazy, right? It's also kind of creepy. This kind of artificial control over a separate biological organism is something straight out of dystopian science fiction, even if there are a few practical applications. The lead researchers were quoted as saying, Machine-animal hybrids combine the compliance of a robot with the natural smarts and endurance of an animal, unquote. And this supports their argument that this method can create more effective and more accurately controllable animal helpers, like landmine-sniffing rats, drug-detecting dogs, and birds that can be turned into discreet spies. Obviously, there's a lot of military application here, which is part of the reason why I think these kinds of studies run really quickly into an ethical swamp. They really just dive in head first. The researchers say that this concept can theoretically be applied to any other mammal, as the brain regions and the neural pathways that were exploited are really primitive. They were evolved in an early mammal ancestor, and so they likely exist in most of the mammal descendants alive today. As for humans, well, our brains are very complex, much more complex than a mouse, so the researchers aren't quite sure how the human brain would react to this kind of stimulating method of control. Again, there are some practical uses here that the researchers list off, like potentially treating neuropsychiatric disorders, like hoarding and kleptomania, which involve misregulated activity 
in the same object-craving neural circuits. But again, the ethical issues here are immediately apparent, and extremely serious. If we just assume that this technology can induce a similar level of external control over a human body as it does to a mouse, then this could potentially revolutionize human societies in a terrifying way. The most obvious example is living, breathing soldiers being controlled by pilots, kind of like uh, that 2009 movie, Gamer. The cynical part of me is imagining a very dark series of futures, where uh, things like the political elite of a government are literally controlled by a single person or a faction, or a world where disruptive citizens are reprogrammed to be much more submissive and obedient, or maybe a world where people are just programmed to do work like robots, and they autonomously do what they're being programmed to do, even though in their mind they might be screaming in rage because they're pretty much being enslaved in this biochemical robotic servitude of sorts. When I think about these kinds of futures, I know that I'm being pretty cynical and, yeah, a little pessimistic, but these things are pretty intense, they're pretty scary, and you do have to ask questions. You do have to wonder where this will go in 10 years, in 50 years in a hundred years. Where is this technology going to take us? What is human society going to look like two, three, four centuries down the road? I should also say that I'm, I'm kind of getting farther and farther away from reality the more I go down this train of thought. This technology that they demonstrated in this study, it's nowhere near the point where it could control humans. There haven't even been studies conducted that show if this technology is even viable or even workable in the first place in humans. It's entirely possible that the human brain just can't be influenced as easily as a mouse, and that would make all of my cynical fears somewhat baseless. The researchers themselves are optimistic, and they argue that this technology can be used to improve animal-based services, like the effectiveness of the rescue dogs and the mind-clearing rats. While the researchers have a valid point, I can't help but think about how this kind of technology, if it gets sufficiently developed and sufficiently penetrates society, I can't help but wonder how that would influence the direction of human civilization. 